So this section is kind of combined and we're looking specifically at issues that occur in the junctional region, that area, that junction between the atrias and then the ventricles. So we're talking about that meat, that meat in the middle. So we're looking at the AV and the bundle of hiss and what takes place between that AV and that bundle of hiss. So what is the issue that is taking place in this area that's causing problems in cardiac conduction. So when we look at junctional rhythms and we name them, we're going to name them based on the intrinsic rate and how it interacts. So we know that the intrinsic rate of the AV and the bundle of Hiss, those two should be, let me write this down real quick, those two, their intrinsic rate, their normal rate should be 40 to 60 beats per minute. So when we name our junctional rhythms, it's going to be with this in mind. If the junction is firing at, an, at its expected rate, then it's considered an escape. Or a junctional escape. If it's at firing at a rate greater than that, so we're talking a rate of 60 to 100 because that would be accelerated, then it would be referred to as accelerated. Because it's, hang on, I'm sorry. Wow, I can't type today. All right. Here we go. It's considered accelerated compared to what it normally would beat at. So if the normal rate is normally 40 to 60, a rate of 60 to 100 would be accelerated, so that's how we would name it. If the rate is 100 to 150, then it would be named tachycardia, because it is very much outside the normal range. So it's all about naming it with a first and last name. We know it's going to be junctional because there's a couple of things to keep in mind. With junctional rhythms, the QRS is still narrow, and which you can see here, and there's no P wave. There is, there's either not going to be a P wave, or in the case of this, you can see that P wave is inverted right there. So the P wave is inverted. So it would either look like this, or it will just be flat as it is in the first one. So when we're comparing these, again, we're going to look at the rate. What is the rate? Well, the rate in this one is 40. What's the rate of this one? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It's about 80 or 90, give or take. And we're looking at this one, and we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. So this is about 110 beats per minute. So when you look at this, you would expect it to beat at this rate. QRS is still narrow. We know we don't have any P waves and it's, it's the same across the entire strip, there's no P waves, so this would be referred to as a junctional escape because it's got the heart rate at 40. If this whole issue right here at the junction, if it is beating at an accelerated rate of 90, and we go, we look at the rate, we've looked at the rhythm, everything looks regular, we're looking here, we have absolutely no P waves going on, and the QRS is still narrow, then we consider this accelerated. And then this one down here, the QRS, the QRS is still within normal limits, although it may look a little wide to you, particularly this far out, but it is within normal limits. And the, the, uh, the P wave is inverted. So we know, again, in junctional rhythms, it will either present itself with no P wave, as in it will be flat, or you'll see that inverted P. So we have the inverted P wave here, 
That indicates that it's a that is junctional in nature. The problem is occurring at the junction. It is creating that inverted P wave. The QRS is responding adequately like it's supposed to, so it's narrow. We're going to call this junctional tachycardia because the heart rate is 110. So hopefully this kind of cleared up any issues. Typically what I see is that students have problems either with the junctional rhythms and understanding that, how they're named, or they have a problem with the heart blocks. So hopefully this will kind of clarify any of you that are having issues with junctionals. It's all based on how they fire. So if the rate is accelerated higher than normal, it's going to be called accelerated junctional. If it's really outside the normal range, it's going to be kind of called junctional tack. And then of course, if it's a rate greater than 150, then we get into things called supra, supra meaning above, ventricular tachycardia. And again, it's still going to be it's still going to be a, a very narrow QRS complex like we've seen because it's coming above the ventricles, but it's super, it's above the ventricles, and it's tachycardic, so it's SVT. Hope this helps.